Right, what have we got today? Bush, well it's a whopper, in fact it's so big it doesn't even fit in the frame there, so sorry about that. Um, I'll give you the quick sort of rundown from the box, but this is now, I apologise straight off, I don't know how to pronounce this, and I, I, when I do um, reviews, I never watch other people's reviews, because I don't want that, that to sort of sway what I'm going to say, I want it to be honest and from my heart, so I can only presume this is either, uh, I don't know, Bry Knight or Brint, I don't know. Um, so put that in the comments section. Help, help, help old TT out here. Yeah. Okay, so it is the, I'll, I'll not mention the name there, but it is the PT18 Pro, also known as the Oathkeeper. Uh, very interesting, something of a tactical thrower. And when we use the word tactical, yes, I realise people throw around terms like tactical and things. This does have a lot of tactical features, which we'll go over um, and we'll talk about. Okay, so uh, before I start this review, um, this company, who, uh, however you pronounce that, um, were kind enough to send this to me. They said, do us, an, do us a review, uh, make it honest, um, you can put anything you like in the video. They don't get to edit this video. This is p my, my sort of thoughts on this, honest. Uh, I don't cut anything out and I do it in one long take and you know it's the truth. So that's out of the way. Okay, so I said, yeah, I'll have a look at this. Uh, Trail Trek likes this sort of things. I've never heard of them and I like, I like looking at fresh new things. So this is what this is about. Okay, so max output 2000 lumens, so pretty good. So one of the, some of the uh, lights that I compared it to, um, some obvious throwers, were the budget uh, orientated Convoy. Uh, this is the, I'll show you there, if it zooms in, the C8 Plus, not the old C8. Um, not a lot of difference, um, it looks slightly different, and it is a smooth reflector thrower, and the classic, the GT Mini from Lumentop, there you go, Lumen Top and the GT Mini, um, very f uh, feature rich UI. Um, this, but this is more tactical. These certainly, I wouldn't consider these tactical, but they are decent. And I, I tried them alongside. Now you're only going to get around a thousand lumens out of these sort of lights, so this is double. So it'll be very interesting to see that. Although to be fair, on those two, they use a totally different um, setup. It is the Cree XBH High, I think, um, which is around a thousand lumens. This uses the 30.2, I think it is, the XHP. In fact, we'll have a look at that. Let's have a look. Mag charging, brilliant. Front side switch, tail, dual tail, which I'm excited to look at. Yeah, it's a 35, sorry. So the Cree XBH 35 LED. So you should get around 2,000 on turbo, but it will step down, but we'll, do, we'll discuss that. And there's some of the other things. Um, only one meter impact rating, but I will discuss that. Um, water resistance, great. And there's your beam distance stuff, which you may or may not get, and then your max times. Um, so very interesting. So you've probably heard enough of me waffling, so I'll quickly show you the box. If you want to pause that, you can, if you get bored. But we'll go over that. It's eighteen six fifty, but you can use two of these CR one two three A batteries. They're the little uh, lithium ones. You can use a couple of them, no problem. Um, but obviously, if they're not not the rechargeable ones, um, just be aware. You don't use the mag charger in that instance. Uh, power indicator, blah blah blah. Yeah, brilliant. And there's your runtime, so you can have a look at that. It's got straw band SOS. Brilliant. Very. I was excited to have a look at this. And there's the name of the company there. Boosh. Get us out of the box. You've heard enough of me waffling. Uh, right, Bush. Get rid of that. There's the box, quite a nice box, uh, but at this price range, I would expect that. I certainly wouldn't expect, uh, you know, an, an old uh, Christmas box of someone's right, so boosh, get rid of that. So we'll take this out. I've tried to put it back exactly how I got it, although I've thrown one of the boxes away that was uh, internal there. So we'll take that out. That was where the battery was, so there's nothing in it now. Look, I'll just, just approve that. It's now empty, boosh, get rid of that. And there's nothing else there other than the isolator, which was on the cell to prevent it being used. Taking that out and now it completes the circuit. So, boosh, get rid of that. Okay, so let's have a look at what we get here. So you get the flashlight, a really good holster. Now I have used this, I actually really like this. It's got some pretty good features like a cutout on the bottom. Here's your lanyard that I've put back in. Uh, cool, and your cable, so put that to one side. So what we'll do is we'll quickly go over the accessories because um, there are other accessories and there's one item in this box which I don't have. The one item which I don't have is the tactical ring. So if you imagine you're holding it like this, this finger would go through a protruding ring. So the ring would come around here and it also has a little nodule on it. Um, the thought behind that is you could use that to attack someone. It would technically may be classed as an offensive weapon therefore, i.e. a knuckle duster. Um, and so the border force would probably 
confiscate that. So I said to the company, don't stick that on, but just be aware that is available and that is a decent feature. I don't consider it an offensive weapon, you know, a knuckle duster with all this hanging off it. It seems ridiculous, but there you go. Um, and it also means um, it can't be taken off you and it's quicker to deploy, especially when it's in this, and I'll show you, when it's in this, there's a cutout. So when you slap it in there, whoosh goes in, it's quite tight, there you go. So that goes to the top. Now normally this ring would come out here, you see, so you can have it so the ring is around here. I need to push that down a bit actually. There you go. There. So you can have the ring down here and you can quickly whip it out. Although to, in order to do that, it's quite a good um, belt on this. You need to carry it like that. Or well, what I was doing was I was trying it like that. So, you, so yeah, that's how I was carrying it. So you can have it like that. Or you can have the ring through there and all sorts of things like that. But I would have it like that and then just yank it and then that's just going to come straight out. Um, great features on this. I mean, I was really impressed with this holster. So many of these companies give you a a holster which feels like a last thought where they think right this is going to go to ship and oh hang on we need a holster ah, stick any old rubbish in this actually feels decent that's about the right size for an 18650 so if, and, it, and it stops at the bottom there so you know i would actually genuinely use that with a with a spare cell um really really good um feels high quality lots of velcro not just some you know it's got a wide patch which i appreciate you can deploy it, watch, because that's cut out, that, that, that's a feature I loved. Stick that in your belt, so I was wearing it like that. In fact, no, no, I had it on that side, I sorry. So you, you put it like that and you could have the, and as I say, you could deploy it like that, which is what I was trying, uh, if I can get it in there. And you can have the ring and just yank it straight out, no problem. But because it's got this cut out, if you do have it like this, you can use it. If I put it on properly, there you go. You can actually use it, watch. You can actually use it from the holster and it doesn't burn it. Isn't that fantastic? When I first saw this, I thought, why is there a hole missing? Now I understand. And also, when you're walking along, watch. Although, I will warn you, when I was walking along with this, it does make a silly noise. Listen. It sounds, it sounds like a, a Navy SEAL in a wetsuit walking around a shopping centre or something. I'm not sure what's going on there. But once it is at the angle you want, I was able to do that turn it on, turn it down a bit, and then I was able to walk along with this on my hip. It actually does sort of work. So another good feature, and also if you can't get this out in time, you can quickly deploy strobe, and I'll show you that. There's strobe. You can quickly deploy that in the horse and just tilt it, and tilt it at somewhere. So they have actually thought about this, and this is actually decent. Uh, once you get your belt through there, you can either run it through or just, just really do that. It's, it's quite bendy, and then just slap it in, and it does work. And I love this rotation feature. I think that is an actual, genuine, decent feature which I would use. I used it for walking. You can quick deploy. You can use it from the holster. I really appreciate that. I think they've really thought about this space for batteries um, I certainly wouldn't put I tried putting pens in one of them it didn't work that one's slightly bigger than that one I would use that one for an 18650 and maybe it's that for something else or you could stick your lanyard on or something like that or your charging cable but really really good they've thought about that so I've gushed long enough about that but I just wanted to say well done well done to the company for doing that I would actually genuinely use this so I will be retaining that um, you also get this lanyard now it is a very decent quality one unlike some of them um, it's decent. It's got a spring-loaded cinch. So there's your cinch there. So press on the uh, spring there and you can change it. It's very high quality. This is, I don't think this is paracord. It doesn't feel like there's much of a core in there. It's possibly it's possibly paracord-ish. Um, someone's gone to the trouble of, you know, sticking that all in a ring ring there. Um, this, these are okay. It, it is, uh, to be fair, it does have a pretty decent spring on it. And it has a swivel loop. You see how that? So, it, okay, it's decent, and I'm not even going to do the pull test, I can tell, you know, this could probably hold up a hammock, I've got no problems with that, um, and this bit seems absolutely fine, no problems. Brilliant, it's an added bonus, and if you do use a lanyard, which is fair enough, I, I don't, but in tactical situations, it may be a necessity, and I understand that, so br brilliant, it even goes with this. I mean, there are two colours for this, and I'll show you. Um, it does come in black, which is the traditional, or desert tan. This is the desert tan. Oosh, so get rid of that. So what else comes? Quite interestingly, I like the manual. Instead of having one of these things where it folds out and it's about you know, 500 feet wide, it's like, it's like an NFL football field. This is sensible. It's almost like a ring binder. So you have this here, and then you can lay it out and flip it down. So just like a, a decent operation manual when you're trying to work on stuff. And it's straight to the point. 
shows your features, it shows you how to use the uh, UI from the tail, then you flip over and then it shows you how to use the UI from the side button because you can, you can use both. You have this a dual set up here where you've got the tail clicker, dual function, and then you have the side button which you can use. Now you can lock this and it does have a little light on it which shows you stuff and again you can turn that off for tactical reasons. You know, For tactical reasons sometimes you do not want to show any light until you get to the point where you have to deploy light and you know kick a door in that's fair enough I understand that so that that is there in, in regards to tactical therefore I don't know why this makes a noise because the last thing you want when you're you know when your team's about to go in and, and, and you know they'll all look at you like you're a complete idiot if you make a, a squelch noise like that but maybe that's something they can work on okay so we'll get rid of that because I'm going to go with them you get a couple of o-rings so you can replace the ones here but and to be fair, the threads on this, you can tell this is an expensive item. There's no sound when you're running them. They're well lubed. There's the O-ring there. In fact, we'll zoom in there. See that there? So that's your O-ring that just goes, it ensures waterproofing basically, um, because this is an IP68. In other words, it is dust and waterproof for all intent purposes. So we'll zoom out there. And that is lubed. And you can see they use like a yellow lube, if I can find some there, can you see it on the lower section of these um, threaded? There's lube on there, which is nice to see, and everything's nice and tied in here. Let's have a good look. Good thick threads, and they're not the really, really thin threads on here. And um, they're sort of like trapezoidal, almost like rectangular. Good high quality ones that aren't going to, you know, you're not going to come a cropper with. And we'll take the battery out and I'll discuss that. Cell, sorry. Um, and we'll have a quick look down there. So you have a spring down there, spring there, so it works with the flat tops and all that. No problems whatsoever. Although the one they've given me is a button top, but it seems to work because you've got spring top and bottom, no problems. You also have this ring on, which is like, a, I call that a holster ring. Um, you can also use it to hold it like that, although you wouldn't necessarily use a large thrower like this in that manner, but you, you know that option is there. So, I mean, it's a really good looking light. Um, you know, the, the one thing when I first got it I wasn't that happy about was the tiny clip. I mean, that's m tiny, look at it. You, you've got this huge light and it, 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 it's quite hefty once you've got the cell in, but that's fair enough for a bit large thrower. This is tiny, but to be fair, it doesn't come off and it does work. If you stick that on Molly Webbin or Pals Webbin, whichever country you're in, you, what you want to call that, you know, the tactical stuff we, we, we use in certain jobs, um, it, it fits on that nicely, it rattles around a little bit, but it, there's nothing squeaking and making noises and stuff. It does work, but I wouldn't necessarily use that. And I did try carrying this in um, pants pockets. It only works for me, especially if I'm sitting in a vehicle, if I put it in the pocket and I rotate, so it's at like a 45 degree angle, so this would be down to the center of my leg. So if you imagine right leg here, left leg here in the pocket, like at an angle, there's no way you can have it the other way, otherwise you just end up with this protrusion. It doesn't work, it's quite a large light. Um, and if you wear skinny jeans, you know, you're in the, the band anthrax from the 80s and you've got those tight chinny, skinny jeans or something like that, you're kind of out of luck. But that's not what this is for, and it does come with a decent holster, so I shouldn't really be whinging about that. So anyway, you get them, and we've got charging here, which I'm going to go over once I put the cell in. But we'll, we'll show you a little bit more here. So you've got a bit of a pattern there, which is the, um, the company logo, and there's the company details, and it tells you the model. It's the PT18, and it's the Pro version, aka Oathkeeper. Um, there's your button, and you also have mag charging. Luckily, there's enough of a difference. That's raised. I can feel that in the dark, whereas you can't feel that. So that's raised enough, because I, 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 I took point with, I think it was Skill Hunt had a light where the button and the charger were so identical that you couldn't find them in the dark, and you're like, well, is that the button? Is that the button? Oh, right, that is. At least with this, it's completely flat. That isn't, and it also feels different. There's like a there's like a thumb groove there. I would have preferred to see that the other way around, because because of the width of this, that that area doesn't need to be that large. I mean, look, that's a very small mag charging head, compared to something like Olight, where, where you get the sort of quite fat round ones. Um, but it works. Watch, B boom, straight on there. There, I did have a question on the initial thoughts video. Someone said, can you put that on and charge it in a bag? I would say no, and I'll show you why. So let's say you have something else in your bag and it rolls past, watch, straight off, you see? Comes back on, but that's not the point. So it would um, change the deployment of that. So no, you can't leave that on, I would say, unless it's, you could, what you could do is you could stick it in the holster um, upside down, 
something like that and have that sticking through you'd have to work you'd have to work something out or attach it to something and have that lead going on but just just be aware of that it's it it's because it's so small and nice um it's you know that's going to come off but it does work and i'll show you that so if i grab my trusty charger here which i'm using some 18650s some samsung 30qs have we got any charge in there yeah 85 percent. okay so what you'd normally do is you'd stick your cell in and we'll do that and again like i say i'm showing you this light up close but just be aware um, in the retail pack you will get a tactical ring which will go over here so if you hold it like that the ring would be around here okay so you'd hold it like that um so i really like the looks of this and um, also i like the, the the thread on this watch you see this i presume you can get other uh, sort of strike bezels or whatever they want to call them um but the thread is actually in an inner section so rather than be on the outside watch i'll unthread this which i was happy to see so the threaded section is in a groove so you see that that groove there you've got two sections so the thread is actually right in there so it goes in that section and then threads nice to see that means that when you're whacking it about or if you haven't got that on you're whacking it about you're not whacking the threads they remain untouched so nice little feature there and that comes on nice decent um, feels decent uh, just feels like a high quality device you can tell in the hand like when you get some of the top end uh, lumen to uh, so we're going to say lumen tops but the uh, olights they feel like a quality device same with the um, ace beams and things like that so moving on to the charging so if you did want to charge us as long as the cell is in and it's orientated the right way it's type a to mag charging now i want to mention something on this this is a high quality item and again you can tell by the little touches this is a braided cable so not like if i find one like what happens most of the time you get these cables there's one so here's a type a type c and what happens is because it's just a rub a thin rubber the bend and bend and bend and then there's a breakage and then they no longer function in this instance what we have is a type a it even have, has like chamfered edges which is quite nice so another little nice feature not not you know need that it doesn't affect the working of the light but nice little chamfered edges that feels like aluminum to me um it's going to last a bit longer it's got this little section here which is sturdy it's got braided cable it, it seems like a decent piece of kit okay so type a we'll stick that in and then if you wanted to charge now i like this feature it lights up so in the dark it, i don't think it is obviously but it's almost like a fiber optic you see that i really like that feature i mean out there you can see how, how bright that actually is so what you do is you just bring that to the mag charge and boosh and then it should charge now orange means um there's a problem but that that quickly turns off if you watch so uh, oh, there you go in fact it just looks orange no i'll do that again there orange and then red so uh, um, if you go to the manual i think in the manual it says orange means there's an issue now it always says for the first one second it's orange that looks orange but if i angle that right you might see it's red it's hard to see yeah okay so that is red now that is charging so i'm really impressed so i mean there's a lot in this package and it does charge quite rapidly i mean if we have a look there i mean it's just dropped down there it was about 1.1 1 .1. um yesterday i was out and it hit about 1 1.2 1 1.3 it's a rapid charge it's it's over one amp um at five volts I'm pretty impressed for this size cell. It's gonna be, it's, you're not gonna be sitting forever waiting for it to charge, put it that way. So it's, it's nice and rapid, and I think they've done a decent job. So, you know, well done to them. And in fact, just to go over that, I'll just quickly show you. When it comes to charging, in, in their own manual, it should say battery indicator, maintenance, uh, charging indicator, there you go, just to show you. So, uh, yeah. I, it, turns orange abnormal situation that would probably be when the cell isn't properly in but i just want to make mention when i've used this every time it's gone orange for the first second and then it has gone off so charging indicator so in charging constant red and then when it's done i think it turns to green yeah fully charged green and that's pretty much all you need to know but you do get the manual with it and it like i say i mean it's, it's dropping now because it's it's filling up it's 0 0.9 of an amp but very very fast charging um i was happy to see that uh, so we'll take that off dead easy so you could just have that leave that on a plug somewhere just come in and bang done charge let go bang done so I'm very impressed and i like this light feature makes you feel like some sort of like ear nose and throat specialist you're going to go and look down someone's ear canal but brilliant get rid of that okay so let's go over the specifics of this light 
So PT, PT18 Pro, so it's using the Cree XHP35. So I did compare it against an old Olight, which is the M2T Warrior. This uses the, I think this is the old XHP30. So this only outputs around 12,000 lumens. This is the newer one, the XHP35. So this is outputting 2,000 on turbo, but there is, on turbo, but there is obviously a, a slight step down. Um, 2,000 lumens, very bright, and you can instantly get it just by turning it on there. Very, very good. Using the 18650, or you can stick in those little cells. Now, the color temperature on this is non negotiable. There's one color temperature or nothing. So, the color temperature this comes in is 6500K. So, we'll just pull up a little thing here. So, as you can see, neutral in the middle, um, very, very warm down on the far left, and white light on the right. So, um, in regards to tints, if you're a tint snob, you're out of luck. It has to be the on this end of the scale, which is white light or cool white if you're uh, in through night land or something like that. That's what they call it. Um, uh, for a thrower, you would probably argue that they, sh they should have chosen a warmer tint because you get less backscatter, but this is a tactical thrower, therefore you sometimes want that. So I understand why they've done that, and this is a more of a mass market device. That's fair enough, I understand that. So that Kelvin colour and the description of the tint there, um, it's very white. Um, now I did some testing, which I'll go over and I'll tell you what which figure I came up with because I tested it with my special Trail Trek equipment, and we'll do that when we get to the end of the review. But it was very close to that. So you got uh, we'll get rid of that boom there you go okay so um, like I say it's got side and tail buttons so you've got the tail buttons you've got two you've got your main deploy button so you turn it on boom you go to maximum and then if you want to make changes you use this one so you've got low medium high turbo and then back to start again and uh, when you initially turn it on if you watch this here see how that turns green now watch it will turn off there you go, it turns off. You can disable that for tactical reasons, which is good. They've actually thought of that. That's a good point. Um, so what that means is, initially, it's giving you a battery uh, readout. So if that is green, you have 70% or more in your cell. If it turns orange, you have between 70 and 30, or just under 70% to 30. If it's red, you have less than 30%. And if it flashes red, you must charge. You're going to start damaging the long-term life of the cell. Um, it's below 10%, so you, you really must take action at that point. And obviously, you can use the side buttons as well. Um, uh, you know, quite easy though. We'll go over that in a moment, and I just want to discuss. Um, it's it's an IP68, so dust proof, waterproof. You can put it in. They say a meter of water according to their box um, for an hour, and it's not going to affect it. So good to see. Um, drop rating uh, is only one meter, so they're saying if this if this is one meter up and you drop it on concrete, it should survive. Um, for a tactical light, I would have liked to have seen two meters. So I'm going to have to mark them down for that because th this is a tactical light. It has all these tactical features. I want this to survive getting in and out of an armed vehicle. I want it to survive being thrown into a locker with other equipment. You know, you know, when you when you're doing tactical things, stuff gets smashed around. You don't have time to you know pussyfoot around. I would prefer to have seen at least two meters, preferably something like five, um, or if possible, you'd probably have to make it thicker, but you know, if you could go up to the army tech levels of sort of 10 meters, that would be, because when you've got equipment and you're out in the field, you need to rely on it. You cannot be saying, oh, Sarge, um, I've got a little dint here and it doesn't work. It, there, there's, there, isn't, there isn't time for that. So we need, to, that's something that, that, that may be up, um, even though this is the pro version, but okay, okay I'll, I'll, I'll knock off a point for that. You've got your mag charging, which is really, really good. Um, and I, I think they've done a good job. Like I say, we'll, we'll quickly go over the UI. I, I've, I've briefly showed it there. So um, tail clap, you can use it from here or the, or the side. So click on, there's turbo. It's also momentary if you just hold it down without the click, you see that, there's no click there. You've got a momentary blast. Um, you can use a remote switch, so if you're using this on a firearm, it's pretty handy. Um, you can just use a, you know, you can have that near your trigger um, and then tap that and get your light and things like that. So that, that I haven't got that in this box because I don't have a need for that, but you can get that. And it replaces this section, then it has the wire to a remote switch, which is great. Um, and when it's on, if you want to change your modes, you just use the second button. So low, medium, high, turbo, low, medium, high turbo. And in regards to those figures, um, low is 10 lumens. They're seeing you'll get 1,870 minutes run time. Brilliant. 10's okay. Um, you could definitely walk by it. Um, I showed it in my initial thoughts video and I'll show it in this. I'll show you the different modes. More than enough to walk by, even for a thrower. Um, your mid mode, which is the next one up, I'll show you. 
mid mode 60 lumens 930 uh, minutes runtime decent um, you've got high 450 lumens uh, 150 minutes and then your turbo 2000 but that steps down after one minute and then they're saying you then get 90 minutes out of that which is pretty decent for an 18650 pretty efficient um, in regards to the beam there is some tint shift it's hard to show uh, a little bit of tint shift around here it goes from white to sort of a yellow and then back to a bluey white uh, there's not a lot of blue in this though to be fair I know, you know for people who say oh i don't like blue in the lights i mean th there's not a lot of that and it is a dedicated thrower as you can see you have this hot spot although it's not bad watch if we go to maximum there's maximum it's not that bad look normally you'd get that would be completely obscured and I'll show you on something like a GT Mini, if we turn that on, had that disengaged, so turn it on, look, there's much more, ob that's very obscured, and I've got this at the same height, look, we'll take this to the same height, okay, see, now that's turbo, not as obscured, now the reason for that is they're using a different uh, setup, so whereas this is using the X XHP, I think it's the high, around a thousand lumens, you can see it just down in the bottom of that bowl there uh, this is using the slightly larger this is the xhp 35 you can see it's if you were to zoom into that you, you would see that it's it's like four four different sections you end up with a fatter hot spot which i actually quite like and um, i found that more useful you see the hot spots a lot wider instead of this intense little thing it's a bit wider that's by virtue of how this is working you still have your spill here directly from the light but this bowl is giving you this hot spot it's a more usable hot spot um, you're not going to get maximum maximum range but this isn't what this is for this is a tactical thrower for i would argue it's going to have to be within a distance you can act upon in other words you're shooting at someone or you're looking at someone something like that so fair enough okay so you also have a secondary feature you can quickly and immediately get to strobe so if you press that watch straight to strobe now it's a decent one so watch i'll, I'll cover it because i don't want to annoy people who are allergic to strobes so watch I'm, trying, I'm going to try and show this right, so it is a fast strobe there, then a slow strobe, then a fast, then a slow. The reason why that's important, and I discussed this in my initial thoughts video, is the whole point of a strobe is you're trying to disorientate the person in front of you. If your strobe is too fast and too consistent, they're just, you know, they're going to start dancing, they're going to say, oh, this is like one of those raves from the early 2000s. You don't want that, you want something that confuses uh, and, and, and too much stimuli and by having this alternate setting where it's fast not too fast though then slower fast slower, you, you, you're keeping the disorientation up so I like that the thought about that that's a decent strobe and it's not too fast you can't change any of the frequencies like you can with some of the more advanced UIs but that's not really what this is for you know and that's fair enough so you've got that um, you can hold for um, you know tail button you can once it's on, you probably think, well, okay, well, if it's on and that button there is changing the modes, how do you get a strobe if it's on? Well, unfortunately, you have to wait two seconds. So you would point that at the attacker, hold it down, and then it'll change. So you do have the option to get the strobe whilst it's functioning, which is another good feature, but just be aware you have to wait the full two seconds. So get the light in the rise, hold it, and then probably back off with the strobe going, or, you know, get the cuffs on them or whatever it is that you're going to be doing. Okay, so very interesting. So you do have the use of your side button as well, which is great. So side button. So how do you do this? Okay, so you can turn it on. So turn it on there. And then you can press it to go through the mode. So low, middle, as they call it, I would call it medium, high, turbo. You see how you can cycle through them? And then you would long press for off. Brilliant. Now, if you want to get a strobe and you're holding it like this and you think, oh, I can't get that button, just a double press. But it's got to be on. Hang on, there you go double press strobe there so now the problem with that is if i turn it off there um you can't get the strobe unless it's on but you would just really you would just learn that and you just turn it on then and double press and go straight to strobe you, you know that's well within half a second so that's not a problem and then turn it again hold for off so you do have that option um, you've got SOS, so if you've got it in strobe, double press in strobe mode and it cycles to SOS, double press again and it goes back to strobe. So you do have that, although the chances of ever needing to use that are quite minimal, I would, I would presume, unless you're out on a, on a boat in near a desert island or something like that. Um, hold for 10 seconds, turns this light off completely. So for tactical reasons, if you've got, especially if you've got this weapon mounted and you haven't got a bit of black tape over that or some camo or something, you don't want people seeing a green light in the bushes and then they go, oh, brilliant, uh, there they are. 
So you hold that down for 10 seconds and it will get rid of that. Hold it down for 10 seconds and it'll come back if you did need that. Um, you've got three, three clicks will lock it. So one, two, three. See there was a flash there. So now you can't use that. However, you can't disable this. So watch, that's locked. So when I press it, it's, it's saying, no, you can't use it. Okay. However, you can still use that. If you did want to lock it completely, obviously you need to rotate the tail, right? Now it won't work, see? And then rotate it back again, and it's going back on. So one, one, two, three, the side button is now functioning, and then hold for off. So a lot of different options there, quite straightforward UI, I like it, it's chunky, it's straight to the point, it's it's tactical driven, and I think they've done a good job. Okay, so we'll move this out of the way, and I'll, I'll go over some uh, tests that I did. So I did some quick tests, um, on the tint or um, the colour the, in Kelvin there uh, and I also tested the CRI, in other words the colour rendering index. Now if you're a, a flashlight tint snob and colour rendering index snob it's probably not a necessity. I'm not going to go into in this review if you want to know about that go into my other reviews. Um, however my testing showed that the CCTK, in other words the uh, the tint of this, uh, my figures I came out with 6416, in other words very very white light um, which was expected, they claimed 6,500k. I got exactly that, although obviously because of the tint shift you need, and the detector I used, you needed to be in the right position to get that. In regards colour rendering index, which isn't something you need to worry about on a tactical light, you're not taking photographs and it, you're not, you know, although you could argue, well, if you're dismantling a bomb or something, then maybe you do need good colour rendering index because you need to differentiate between colours. That is a valid point, yes, true. Um, colour rendering index wasn't that bad though, it was 71.7 I got, um, which is within expected range for the Cree emitter that they're using. Um, I tested for flicker, I couldn't find any. Um, when I initially tested there was a little bit of flicker, but then I kept testing and testing and testing. There was no pulse width modulation flicker, um, so it will be irritating on the eyes over a period of time and shouldn't give you migraines and things like that. So very decent, all within expected range, feels decent, you know, a really good piece of kit. Okay, so let's get rid of that. Right, that's gone. Okay, so let's go over some good points and some bad points. Okay, so good points. Feels very well made, it, it honestly does. Um, and I'm not just saying that, it really does, it's rock solid. Although I'm worried by the one meter drop rating for a tactical light, I'd want that higher. Um, but I, so I, I, I simply have to mark a point off that. Um, Charge is very fast um, for that size cell, way over one amp, brilliant. Uh, braided USB cord with the little chamfered edges and uh, it's got aluminum in, you know, they've, they've, they've taken a lot of effort, it's got the little light coming out and everything. Um, hidden bezel, the thread bezel is hidden away, good, that means it's going to last a long time if you're making a lot of changes. It's waterproof um, to a degree anyway, IP68, that's more than enough, brilliant. Uh, remote switch available, so if you want to use it on a weapon and things like that. Um, good tail ring, uh, although I haven't tested that, um, but it looks decent from the photographs that I've seen on the website, but I can't attest for what it's like, what it's made out of. I don't know. I don't have it. Um, so just be aware of that. I can't comment on that. But it looks like it looks like a decent thing, so you can just whoosh, whip it out and then boof, deploy it. I like that, especially from the hole in the side of the holster. Um, nice fat hot spot, in other words, usable. Um, excellent holster. I was very impressed with this. The only thing I didn't like was, listen, this, you know... I don't know what's going on there. They really need to change that. If you're in a tactical situation, I mean, for people who've been in the army, you know, before you set off, you, you tape down things that clink and clank and bang, and you, you, you kind of give away your position, you, otherwise you die. So I don't know why on a tactical light, I mean, I understand when they say tactical, you know, we could be talking about security guards here, but if I was, you know, if my life was on the line, I wouldn't want a spooky thing like that. I don't know why it's like that, but okay, I'll maybe just mark off a point off that. I should mark off loads of points because someone could die, but it, I understand that this light isn't always going to be used in that environment. Okay, but I just wanted to mention it. Um, but other than that, it's an excellent holster. It's even got the room for the extra cells and things like that. And, I, you know, I appreciate the design and the way you can deploy it like that. I love this. That is a tactical feature that I would use. And I used it for walking when I had it on the left there and I would tilt, tilt, and then deploy on a low level and then you can walk hands-free and things like that. So that does work. Um, instant strobe, you just press a button, bang, instant. Uh, and you can also get it whilst it's functioning. Do you know what I mean? You've got the ability to quickly get to it, even from the side. Uh, mag charging, which does work very rapid. Um, 
There's a lot to like about this. You know, it's an excellent tactical thrower with a good, good holster with one thing that I would change. So bad points. Only one meter drop rain. I'd love to see this a minimum of two, minimum for a tactical. You want it to be rock solid if your life's dependent on it. Um, tiny clip, but to be fair, it does, it does work. And it, it's difficult. If they start making the clip much bigger, you're gonna ruin the ergonomics of this and it's gonna become an irritation to use. Whereas in this, like that, that works. It's beautiful. It's very, very comfortable. You know, the ring goes here um, and obviously uh, in the retail package, you'd also have a ring here as well. It feels beautiful in hand. It, it, it's a nice piece of kit. It's well balanced. You know, a really, really good piece of kit. Um, price, you could say is bad. Well, $80-ish, but you know, so is, so is Ace Beam. They're expensive and you know, you, if you're going up to all eight levels, then okay, for a tactical light, you've just got to expect that. Um, so like I say, bad points, get rid of the squeak, too squeaky, and up the drop rating. But I'm gonna to have to give this a good mark. I'm gonna to have to say a nine out of 10, because it, it's very hard to knock it. Yes, the clip, but again, I don't know how you would manage that. It's got all the features you want. You can get rid of the light if you want it. It's got that ring if you want it, instant turbo, it just, if I, if I had to grab a tactical thrower now, I would grab this. Even though I've got things like the uh, the jet beam tactical light, better clip, but it's not as strong. Um, it's got nice features on here, but it hasn't got instant strobe and things like that. It's got a nice locking ring, or you can lock it on, you know, yes, and lock it to momentary. But I think this, this is better. I mean, the, I'll show you the lights that I did compare it against. Um, the, these are the lights I went out, and I'll give you a quick description of them, and then what we'll do is we'll look at the beams side by side before we go out. So I tested it with, now what I'm going to do is, I'll move these there. Okay, so I tested it against these two, the C8+, Plus, which is the budget version of what this is achieving. They're both smooth reflectors, in other words, they're about throw. Um, this is a warmer tint, as you'll see in the beam shots, but this throws slightly further than this, but this is less expensive. Around a thousand lumens. This is a tail clicker, this isn't. You can't get the instant turbo, and you're gonna look, the hotspot is a little bit more irritating up close. Look, that is massively obscuring detail. I'm sure you would agree there. See, and the same can be said for this on turbo. Um, brilliant throwers, these would probably throw sl maybe on pawn slightly further, even though they're half the amount of lumens, um, and they're less tactical, but they're smaller. So if we look side by side, they are certainly smaller, but they have wider balls, and you're gonna get more of a, a, um, a concentrated throw on them. So put them to one side. Um, something else you might wanna consider is a Jet Beam IIM TAC. Um, nice, interesting features. You've got a tail button there, um, you can also lock it off uh, back on as a clicker or you can set it to momentary. They're all decent features. You can also set the output here with this. This rotates. Interesting, um, but it just isn't going to isn't going to go as far and it's using the older XPH high I think this is so around a thousand ish lumens You're not going to get anywhere near the level of this and a much smaller ball uh, Both smooth reflectors, but this is going to do a lot better um, and you'll see that in the shots um, But this this is this, I mean I've had this for years and it's still working decent um, you can, There's options to mount this on weapons and things, but it's a bit more finicky. So put that to one side so then if you wanted to move up a level, so these are around a thousand lumens, so let's move up a level. So using the older um, XBH high, um, it's the XBH 30, I think this is, the 30, bear in mind this is the 35, so more lumens. You get around 11,000 to 12,000 lumens on this. This is a tactical, I would tactical-ish, or tactical, you might want to call it. It has an orange peel reflector, so it slightly spreads that more, and I'll show you that. There, so there's a, there's a, there's a, uh, sort of there's less of a distinct zone between the hotspot you can see it there but it sort of melts into the spill uh, a, a bit more um, but not as wide beam you're not going to get it goes far and it's not as light although it does a decent job and this is quite uh, quite a decent one and it also has a lockable side button and things like that it's got one of those mushy buttons that you can press from any angle you see it's quite interesting it doesn't make a noise listen I like that, I like that. I like lights that don't make a noise for tactical reasons. Sometimes you don't want clicks and bangs and whacks. Um, you know, although not everyone needs that feature, I realize. So um, quite bright, decent. Um, interestingly, they chose a uh, orange peel because it's up close. Um, and, you know, decent though, and there are newer, newer models of this. I quite like the clip on this and it's reversible. 
decent. That does work. I've used that on multiple uh, things and it does work. Okay, so we'll put that to one side. And if you wanted to move right up and say, well, look, 2000 lumens isn't enough. I want 4600. You could go for something like the ASBeam E70. Totally different emitter though. This is using the XHP35 and this is using the 70.2, so the newest 70 version. So as you can see, massive difference in size. Look the size, look the size difference on that LED down there. Okay, compare that one. So a fatter hotspot again. Uh, I, I deployed that, so turn it on, and there's turbo. So much, much brighter. But uh, if I remember rightly, it's an orange peel, so you get quite a diffuse beam. It does throw, and it's very bright, uh, but this is just an option. Similar price, much smaller, not very tactical though, is it? You don't have all those tactical features and rings and uh, things like that. I will say the clip on this is very good, actually. I do, actually. It's one of my favourites. But there you go. So that's just an option if you wanted more lumens, smaller, uh, bigger battery as well. This is using a 21700, and I think it's 5,000 milliamp hours. I'll just quickly show you that. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, oh, more, 5,100 milliamp hours, so massive. So a big difference in capacity, and I'll show you. So if that's the capacity of that, and you compare it to the capacity of this, but bear in mind, you're, you're pumping out a lot more lumen, so it's gonna go quicker. So there you go, this is a hydrogen, so 3,100 milliamp hours, decent, very decent. So it's slightly bigger than a 30Q by Samsung. Anyway, so I've, those are the lights I tested it against, so we'll move this out of the way. So let's, let's bring up a picture and we'll, we'll make some discussion on that. Okay, so there's your photograph. Okay, so what I did was I went out and I decided, right, I'm going to take a picture and I, I tried my best to have the, car, the uh, light at exactly the same position, same setting, aiming at exactly the same target. The only slight difference, which I will point out, if you notice the Lumen Top GT Mini bottom middle, I didn't have that slightly as high. Can you see how that's slightly lower? I was holding it slightly lower, so that's my mistake, but I'm just pointing that out because I am 100% truthful on these things. Other than that, they were all aimed at exactly the same target. So just bear in mind that Mini was, you know, maybe it's like uh, uh, 12 inches, six inches lower, not even that, but that's why that looks slightly different. Anyway. So what can we see here? So straight off, we can see that the Ace Beam A70 has a very floody beam there, even though it isn't a TIR or something like that, which would give you a very wide, floody, diffuse beam. Uh, it's very bright though, so you could say, well, that's cheating. It's got 4,600 lumens, you, it's not comparable, but I just wanted to throw something in there to say, look, if you wanted more light, you could go for it. Okay, so nice wide beam on that one. But next, let's look at the uh, PT18 Pro. Okay, so what can we see here? Well, I would argue that you can see straight away in comparison to the Ace Beam, not as wide beam. So if you're walking along and hiking, it's more of an irritation, but this is a thrower. You're trying to get the light to throw. You're not as interested in your peripheral vision and what's slightly to your left and right. Although you could argue in a tactical situation, that's still quite important, but uh, we'll not go into that. So in this regard, you can see the blue beam there, which is the hotspot there firing out. It's got quite a wide beam. If you compare it to the Convoy C8 on the right there, um, see how wide it is and um, you've got a tight hotspot on the C8 Plus. Same can also be said of the GT Mini bottom middle, again tight hotspot and you can see that beam very apparent. Now in regards to the PT18 Pro, the C8 Plus and the Lumentop GT Mini, they all have a not a very wide beam, I'm sure you'll agree. In fact the, the worst offender there is the Lumentop GT Mini, but to be fair it's probably one of the best throwers in this lineup, you're going to get the maximum distance. Uh, at, at a reasonable 1,000-ish lumens. Um, now, I, I would say that the, the PT18 Pro is probably very compatible, comparable, almost the same as the C8 Plus for width. I think it's doing a decent job for a thrower. Um, and in regards to what I can see in the distance, in fact, what we'll do is we'll zoom in on the C8 Plus and the PT18 Pro throw section. So as you can see, there's more of a fat, usable throw um, being made apparent there so I would say on the far side of that river it's easier you see you're seeing more and in, in, in order to support that argument and um, the two parallel trees on the right hand side of that um, between them you can see the bank you can see it on the C8 but it's, it's more apparent on the PC18 Pro so there's a wider more usable apparent um, th uh, throw there so we'll zoom back into there that's all back to normal, there you go. And then we'll look at the Olight Warrior. Again, um, quite an interesting one. It's not as wide as the Ace Beam. Um, you know, if you compare the Ace Beam and the Olight, um, 
you can see that top right of both of them there's like a knobbly there's an arm of a tree coming in there you can't see it as much on the Olight as you can on the Ace Beam but again you could say well okay there's more lumens and blah blah blah, blah. but they are both um, uh, an orange peel reflector so you're getting more peripheral vision is that what you want and then you look at the Lumen Top GT Mini again you know a, a pure thrower that's what its purpose is um, but it's not it's doing a pretty decent job it's pretty good it's I would say it's slightly brighter than the Convoy C8 uh, or it appears that that way anyway and maybe a tiny bit more usable uh, through I don't know and then the jet beam IIM tack to me that looks that's like a, a sort of a darker version of the PT-18 Pro and um, not a lot to be said there in fact maybe you're getting less peripheral vision so it's actually a bit tighter but that's because the ball if you remember is slightly um, different and it is not as wide as the PT-18 Pro so there's not a lot to be said there other than the takeaway is the ace beam is very bright but that's unfair you could say because it's using a totally different emitter um, <clears throat> and a different setup yes true in regards to these throwers you can see that the the Olight warrior does a decent job but the brand the the, uh, the pt18 pro is basically a thrower but it's got a usable thrower i would argue okay so let, let's get rid of that foot over there okay that's gone right so so like i say nine out of ten um the only things that can knock it on is this tiny clip, but again, how would you change that? Um, although you could argue, well, they've, they've managed it on this, they have, but you know, this has nobbles and bits and loops and things, so I understand that. And um, they need to get rid of the squeak, um, they lose half a mark for that because someone might, you know, hear you in the dark. And one meter drop rate, and that needs raising for for this price level um, if it's a tactical light, in my personal opinion. So it gets a, it, it just gets a solid nine. Um, I can't give it any higher. And I'm not going to give it any lower because it, it excels at everything else. It does a really good job and it, it, it feels beautiful in the hand. Okay, so you've had enough of me waffling, so let's get outside. I'm going to show you loads of beam shots. I'm going to show you range tests. I'm going to show you side by sides. I'm going to show you walking, holding it in different orientations and different distances and things like that. I'll cover everything and I'll show you how the beam, sh the beam looks on a wall and things like that. So um, 9 out of 10, well done to Brynit or Bry Knight or probably Bry Knight. Um, uh, they've done a decent job. Um, I can recommend this is as a tactical thrower. Well done, decent job. A few, few little niggles that I would change, but that's just my personal opinion. So thank you very much. Now at nine out of 10, you've had enough of me waffling. Let's get out, whoosh.